One of the underappreciated dangers of taking arguments against abortion seriously is that it forces you to elevate the kind of idiots that argue against abortion. And we're seeing that more and more as America's rights slip further into the grips of anti-abortion extremists. And that leads the abortion fight to spill over in all kinds of unrelated places, like as we saw last week, in vitro fertilization. Now, the reason anti-abortion activists say they're against IVF is that it creates embryos that are routinely destroyed or frozen. The real reason, if you ask me, is that it's a thing that gives women control over their reproduction. But regardless of the reason, it's the kind of spillover you're doomed to as soon as you start trying to build a worldview around the nonsense idea that life begins at conception. And as silly an objection as it is, it's getting ever more mainstream as Republicans swing ever further into the lunacy. Case in point, one dusty Devers, who in addition to sounding like a wacky neighbor kid from a 50 sitcom, is also the favorite to win a seat in an upcoming special election for the Oklahoma State Senate. Dusty is also a pastor who once delivered an anti-IVF sermon where he describes the discarded embryos as, quote, cryo-orphans that are being, quote, cryo-incarcerated in frozen prisons, end quote. He then goes on to say that people who use IVF are, quote, waging an assault against God. So, yeah, take a wild guess what this guy is going to do once he gets in office and starts making laws. But I do have at least some good news to share with you this week, which is rare. I just learned that St. Mary's College, an all-female Catholic school in Indiana, announced that it will start accepting trans students. And look, I'm not normally a fan of expanding the scope of religious education. But if we're going to have it, the very least we can do is have it with equality. And this is a step in that direction. But even if I wasn't inclined to applaud it from that angle... It's also good news because of the damage it's doing to bigots' cardiovascular systems when they find out about it. Because look, this is hardly unprecedented. A lot of Catholic colleges admit trans students, including at least 22 all-female Catholic schools. But the people up in arms about this don't actually care about women's colleges enough to know that. So they're acting like this is a novel betrayal of God's holy order. And I am here for it. The bishop that runs the diocese that the school is in has even made noise like he might strip the school of its official Catholic designation. But since the school has a $200 million endowment and taking the word Catholic off the name would probably increase enrollment, that's probably a hollow threat. But that's hardly the only idiotic misogyny thing that Catholics are freaking out about at the moment. They're also still in an uproar over a recent music video that was filmed in a Catholic church, even though the woman in it was sexy. Specifically, when Sabrina Carpenter did a video where at the end, there's a lighthearted funeral scene for her past boyfriends where they're all in pastel coffins, and she's dancing around in an outfit that, while covering her almost completely, still does so in a sexy way. And so when the video came out, the Catholic Church freaked out so fucking hard that they ended up firing the priest who gave them permission to film in his church. So yeah. It's demoralizing to see my gender repeatedly diminished by one of the world's largest and wealthiest institutions. But on the other hand, it's kind of empowering to know how terrified they are of my exposed clavicle. So I'll call it a draw. And with that, I'll wrap things up and hand you back over to Noah, Heath, Eli, and Marsh.